In this video, I'm going to create an arbitrage trading strategy that will capture the price differences between futures and spot products. So first, let's clarify the difference between a futures and a spot product. So a future product is a financial derivative that allows two parties to trade a financial asset at a future date, whereas a spot product is a financial product that represents the current market value at the present. And it could be, for example, the current value of a physical commodity or an ETF that tracks the current market price. In this example, you'll find different markets where we can try to apply our arbitrage trading strategy. So on the left side, we have our futures products and on the right side, we have our spot products. And for spot products, you have a choice between uh, choosing an ETF that tracks the current spot price, or you can just invest into the current uh, physical commodity. So for example, if you wanted to invest in gold or silver, uh, you have a choice between the physical gold that is stored in, in vaults, or you can just invest in the ETF that is doing the tracking for you. So before we start talking about creating strategies, I would like to first clarify the term basis. So basis is the difference between the current futures and spot price, and it follows a very simple formula. So the formula for basis is equal to price of futures minus price of spot. And there are many factors that influence the uh, basis, and that is, for example, current interest rates and storage costs in case you trade commodities. And so for those of you who are very new to this term, uh, there is a very good video provided by CME where they explain basis more in detail. So if you're new to this, uh, I will add this link in the descriptions. So please watch it uh, so you can actually follow along with this video. What you can see on the chart is the basis between the NQZ5 contract, which is the NASDAQ 100 futures expiring in December 2025. And we see the basis against the QQQ contract, which is the NASDAQ ETF. So as you can see that over time, as time goes on, the basis uh, is decreasing. And that is because futures against spots, uh, they follow one fundamental rule. And that is that as time goes on or as futures is nearing expiry, basis will converge to zero. So in other words, at the expiry date, the price between the futures and spot product should be the same. So before anyone asks, what does QQQ price adjusted mean? So if you look at the NASDAQ futures price, uh, which you can see on this chart here, it is around 25,000 US dollars. And then if you look at the QQQ ETF price, it is around 600 US dollars. And so when we uh, trade an arbitrage strategy, we want to hedge the prices of equal cash value, right? So what we're doing here is that we have to apply something called a linear regression between the NASDAQ spot index price and the QQQ ETF price. And so what we'll get is that uh, QQQ is about 40 times smaller than the NASDAQ futures price. So if we adjust the QQ price by about 40 times, uh, we will get a chart that looks something like this. And this chart is very meaningful to now compute the basis and then compute the relative value between those two assets. So now that you understand what basis is, let's now have a look at this intraday basis chart. So this chart represents the basis between the NQZ5 futures contract and QQQ ETF. We see that the basis ranges between 100 and 96.5. And so what I've plotted here is some fair value level. So what I mean by that is that if the basis is above this fair value level, we want to sell the basis. And if basis is below this uh, fair value level, we want to buy basis. And so as you can see here, our objective is to generate profit by capturing these intraday basis swings. And so what long basis or buying basis represents is we want to buy futures and sell the spot product at the same time. And by shorting the basis, 
we are selling the futures and then buying the spot at the same time. Of course, this is not so easy, right? Because what are the potential problems and questions that arise when we want to trade such a strategy? So the number one uh, question or the main reason why this strategy might not work is because the spread and transaction costs may be too high to justify the profit, right? If you pay, for example, $2 on the spread on one side and then $2 on the spread on the other side, you're minus four, and if the intraday basis range is less than the transaction cost, then this strategy will not work. And so the second question is, how do we compute the fair value correctly, right? How do we determine that the basis is overpriced or whether it's underpriced? And then three, how do you determine the price levels, right? How do we know that this is the high point, right? And this is the low point. Because of course, as in any market, we can predict what price might do. So these are the three main questions that we have to ask ourselves to actually make this work. So now the question is, how do we do this, right? So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to use Python to create a training algorithm that will trade on interactive brokers. And with Python, uh, we will generate the trading signals and then we will then submit the trades using TWS API. So we will then observe our trades live on the interactive brokers platform. So before I start coding and trading live, uh, maybe I would like to share my expectations on uh, the success rate of this experiment. And so based on my experience, when it comes to trading arbitrage, trading strategies, the success rate of uh, an individual trade idea are very small. So I'm not expecting uh, that I will find a profit strategy for every market or for every time frame, um, but instead, I'm hoping that after going through all these markets, maybe there will be some few trading strategies that will work. And that is actually all you need. You need to find an edge in the market and you don't need to find it everywhere. So if we are able to, you know, just find a strategy that works on the single asset class, that is all we need because that means that we can just allocate our money into this uh, arbitrage and try to extract as much edge as possible. All right, so now it's time to get started. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to share live clips on how I code and trade live. And for those of you who are new to the channel, my name is Tu and I'm director at ADJ Traders, which is an algorithmic trading firm. So let's get started. Hi guys, so right now I'm looking at the NQZ5 features contract against the QQQ ETF. And so what you see here is the basis data uh, for November 21st. And right now what I'm trying to do is I'm going to connect uh, live data from interactive brokers, put it into an application so I can see live intraday basis data. And then I'm going to test a script that can open a long or short basis position. So it's like a script where you manually tap in buy or sell, and then it will create a hedge position between NQZ5 and QQQ. Right now I'm connected to my TWS demo account uh, where I have MNQ and QQQ enabled. And so what I did is I am using this live data to feed it into my web application. So here, if uh, yeah, we go to my spread dashboard here, I create a very simple dashboard that takes the live data and then plots it uh, you know, in a chart. So uh, this is what I'm talking about. Uh, so here on this chart, you see the basis data for today, which is MNQZ5 versus QQQ. And so today what you see is that the basis range is between 115, uh, yeah, between 115 and 112. So what I'm trying to do is I'm, so the point of strategy is trying to find, uh, you know, low basis values so we can buy the basis. And so when they're high, we can sell it. Right, so right now basis is around 115, which I would consider high. And then uh, by selling this basis, which means selling the futures and buying the spot, we're then speculating on this basis to drop. 
And so to uh, execute my orders, I've also created a very simple script that can send this order to uh, interactive brokers. So here I created a Python file called spreadtrader.py. And so what this uh, app does is it is uh, quoting a bid and ask spread. So it is adding liquidity on the MNQ contract. So hopefully that is also reducing the transaction cost. And once that uh, limit order is filled on MNQ, it will then set a market order to hedge that position. So the, we're using market orders to reduce the risk when the position is not hedged, right? So right now my uh, application loaded. So for example, if I want to sell the spread, I would uh, provide action sell, and then I would quote the limit on the basis uh, where I want to sell. So let's say I want to sell at 115. So what it did is, is now sent uh, an order to uh, interactive brokers. So first it filled my MNQ contract here and then hedged the position on QQQ. And so if I want to close this position, then all I have to do is create a buy uh, order on the basis. And let's say I also want to exit 115. Of course, this is not guaranteed because uh, you know we can have slippage during this time but now we see that our position has been closed so now that i have like sort of some draft how to you know execute orders uh, we need to check for things such as you know execution quality and also check if for example the transaction costs and the spread is not too high because even though we can make like one two or even three basis points on this spread i mean on the on the basis uh, it is not guaranteed that we make profit because if the transaction cost is too high, then there is no point in trading this intraday. And so I'm going to test this uh, later in a live environment. And so what we're still missing is, you know, we still need to compute uh, the fair, fair value of the basis. So what I like to use, for example, is a Bollinger Band. A Bollinger Band basically just reacts to recent price action, but also there are other methods. For example, calculating fair value based on the current interest rate, right? Because the basis cost basically represents just the opportunity cost in the futures market. And uh, so we can compute uh, that using, you know, fundamental uh, interest rate values that determine the fair price. But I think this is already like too much for this video. So uh, for next video, I'm going to prepare, uh, you know, some uh, live trading experiments where I actually uh, test the liquidity and execution quality in the live markets. And then uh, I'm going to see, just create a proof of concept if we can actually generate profit in spite of commissions, spreads, transaction costs, and so on. So guys, thank you for watching this video and I'll be back uh, with another video very soon.